29. How to Insure Trouble The Reverend T. Robert Ingram tells an amusing story of his World War II experiences in the Navy in the Pacific. As they moved into action, the ship's commander, about to experience his first battle, addressed the crew grandly, like a Lord Nelson, over the public address system. Then came the great movement, and with solemnity the order was given, Fire one, fire two, and so on. Then there came a wild burst of profanity over the public address system, followed by the commander's plaintive shout, The dirty so-and-so is shooting back at me! War becomes a little less grand and operatic. When that happens, that man clearly has a great many spiritual brothers and sisters. I recall one woman whose sharp, acid tongue made any gathering or meeting she attended a potentially trying and painful experience fall apart in tears and rage when she heard herself criticised. It was well and good for her to shoot down everyone else, but it suddenly became nasty and unchristian when one person spoke up to her. She was not and is not alone. The world is full of people who are bent on making trouble, but who want no part of it themselves. They will talk sharply of one and all, but they cannot bear to be criticised. Solomon characterised such people as fools. Quote, he that passeth by and meddleth with strife belonging not to him is like one that taketh a dog by the ears. Proverbs 26.17 To catch a passing dog by the ears is to ask for a dog bite and to deserve it. Have you been bitten lately? Don't blame the dog. Maybe you asked for it. If you take a poke at a man, don't be surprised if he takes on kindly and hits back. The meddler asks for trouble, he deserves to get it. The person who gossips will be gossiped about. To pick a fight is a good way of getting one. To be surprised at the consequences is to be a fool. A Spurgeon observed, quote, In any business, never wade into water where you cannot see the bottom. Beware of no man more than yourself. We carry our worst enemies within us. End quote. 